Panloids Podcast. This is Kyle with Dimitri, Jeremiah, Pierre. That was pretty solid, to be honest. I like that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was pretty good. It and then use it all the time. Yeah, I need to Great do that. Idea. I don't know why I don't. Great idea. I make it very difficult. I don't know why you've tried this so yeah, many times. Yeah, why give him the option to make it difficult? <laughs> right, that's true. All right, so today we are talking about the She-Hulk finale, and then maybe some other stuff. So with that, Yellow Suit Daredevil, because we haven't talked about it yet. Let's talk about it because it was a better episode than the finale. Okay, we're already going to have an argument here. Someone right. doesn't like the meta. Argument started. Right. Fight. In alphabetical order, Dimitri, your opinion on the finale. It was cool. There was a lot to leave off on. There's definitely room for a second season. I think we might see like a scene or two of She-Hulk being in, not She-Hulk form, because they'll probably do it the cheapest way possible. We'll probably see her in the Born Again show. And I don't know. I didn't like the Hulk at the end. I thought that was unnecessary. The reveal, I think he shouldn't have been in it at all. Oh, like Hulk and then his, you know, spoiler. Yeah, all of it. I wish that they had left the whole Hulk scar thing away, and that would have been a bigger question mark for whatever next thing that they're doing. Out of 10. Seven. Okay. Jeremiah, same question. I don't know if I watched the same finale as the majority of you. That finale was amazing. Nine out of 10, in my opinion. The show, again, Dimitri was correct. It left a lot of stuff open that we can have a second season. I like the reveal personally because it sets up Planet Hulk. We know that he was in space for some time in between movies and in between Ragnarok. We get to hopefully find out exactly what was happening. And so they have to set up that Hulk movie instead of putting into another show. Yeah, I loved it. I love the fourth wall. I love Kevin. That was genius. And fun fact, because I don't believe you guys are aware, but those Captain America posters that you saw all around the studio that said, I want you to stay off your phone, actually hang in the Marvel offices. Those exact posters actually hang in the Marvel offices. Oh, cool. An in-joke within an in-joke within an in-joke. There was rumor that they were originally trying to get George Clooney to voice the robot, Kevin. Pierre. So my take was a little bit different from Jeremiah's. I think it was terrible. I would rate the whole show together as like a five wasn't a fan of it episode eight 10 out of 10 best episode if they just did that nine times the show would have been great but they didn't this last episode was not good i enjoyed the fourth wall break because i know that's very true to her character and they did a, such a great job doing that the episode was well done don't get me wrong but i just feel like for a finale they should have did more with it scars reveal shouldn't have did it or should have did it an after scene where it was just like hulk maybe sitting in his spaceship and then you see like someone sitting across from him or something where it's just like oh this is my son and then it was like all right like family dinner like i will say i like daredevil and she hulk being in a relationship potentially like that whole little question mark on where that's going is really cool because again comics kevin as a robot i like the idea of that i liked the episode it was a cool idea i just didn't think it was really a good way to wrap up the whole show like, i kind of like the direction of where they were going with that finale before they did that where he became a hulk and all this stuff i was hoping for a big action scene and when they came back from her going through the fourth wall break and there wasn't that action scene that's where I was kind of disappointed. I was expecting, okay, this is how I want to rewrite my story. And then a cool action scene and something that made sense. They basically just threw away him taking her blood. Okay, it was for nothing. The whole buildup of her show was literally for nothing. I will defend you slightly. I got you back here. It did feel <sighs> like they had this amazing idea to break the fourth wall in such a brilliant way. Where they even had her mention X-Men, Kevin as a robot. But you're right. They literally threw away the whole plot of the show, which was hinted at. Which was trying to get her blood. Was just knocked off with no action scene. Did we need another action scene? We did have one the prior episode. We did have some the episode before that. And it is a comedy, so no. I would still give it an 8 out of 10. And the only reason it's not a 10 out of 10 is, like you said, they threw away plot points with the snap of a finger. At least could have been hinted. Could come back in the future did we get scar which is really cool yeah would i have preferred him in a different way that's my preference i'm not holding that against it but they did throw away a big plot point that could have been after credit or something to give her a second season and not just kind of be like yeah she'll show up somewhere because we're going to focus on a new male hulk I agree that the way they revealed Scar wasn't the best, and Pierre's idea of him sitting across from him in a spaceship would have been way better. I agree 100%. But I believe that the Scar reveal was important and needed. I don't think that was a waste, in my opinion. But clearly, my opinion doesn't fucking matter here. 
No, I think Scar was great. I don't think it was like necessarily something you didn't have to do. I didn't like the actual reveal, but I get it. The whole show has always been, this is about She-Hulk, not the other things. And the way he even showed it was like, hey, this is Scar. Okay, let's move on. Let's pretend like that's not a big deal. Which I think is cool too. Like at a family gathering, you're bringing some random son that no one knew about. It's like, oh yeah, this is my son. Anyways, how's everyone doing? So I thought that was kind of cool. The other notion that the very first episode ends on Captain America book to we now know for sure the Hulk smashes as well. Yeah, that's true. Some parallel that's structure. True. Yeah, I did like the beginning of the episode. I will say that before they went to the fourth wall break where it was like a callback to the old Hulk. The intro to the show was one of the best things about the entire show. That homage to the original Hulk series down to the Savage She-Hulk mm -hmm. split screen thing. Oh man, I was giddy. That was well done. But again, I just feel like they could have wrapped up the show differently. Not gonna lie, somewhat excited to see the Wrecking Crew. I was like, all right, cool. Like, if we're gonna do this, I want to see it done. I want to see, like, a big fight with them. We just didn't get that at all. And they were just like, yeah, no, no. He's arrested and that whole thing that you thought was happening, not happening. I don't know. Which it could still happen, right? Whatever. I mean, there's no confirmation she's getting a second season, right? Not yet. I hope not, honestly. They just didn't give you enough in every episode. Like, nothing was happening. The eighth episode... Before this finale, awesome. There was a plot that was happening. It was well done. They even had Daredevil kind of an homage to his actual show with his music. Are you in danger? Is Soup's off camera holding a weapon to you, telling you to say all of these things? Why? Was he not a fan of She-Hulk? Is that what happened? I don't know what to call them. I want to just call them the MCUers who take that as the Bible, as what they see in the screen, and just pretend like source material doesn't exist. That's a popular opinion of just like, nothing happened, which is true, but to fight that, I think we're all having issues accepting that it was a sitcom. I have zero issues accepting that it was a sitcom. I love yeah. the fact that it was a sitcom. I don't know. I love so much of it, but I do also have an issue with the underlying plot being diminished and some of the episodes being mildly pointless. All right, let's do this. How mm -hmm. do you feel about Leapfrog? I liked Leapfrog. Leapfrog was comedic relief. It was a funny way to bring in that character. It was a nice way to introduce another street-level villain. And we knew we were going to get a bunch of D-list, E-list, G-list villains. I mean, we had the Porcupine show up. Having Leapfrog there was great, even though my biggest pet peeve is it's supposed to be Frogman. So with that too, then, with Pierre's point, what about the Wrecking Crew? I don't think we're done with the Wrecking Crew yet. I okay. think we've introduced more street-level people. I think that's one of the things that this show has done is introduce street level villains because we know that we're getting a street level universe. We know that's going to be a thing that's happening. It's really expensive to keep these big plot threads going in the movies and we're getting nine months to a year in between points when we can go week to week to week to week getting little mentions and little builds up with these stories. And then what, we're on a six week break before we see them again in another show. I feel like it didn't even do that great though. I didn't laugh that much. Megan the Stallion. No. No? Dating I, with She-Hulk. I don't even like Friends. I'll sit there and watch Friends and laugh at things on Friends. Compare it to Friends. You want to compare it to Friends? It's not even close. Beatry loves Friends, all right. I'm just saying, if we're talking sure. about if we're talking sitcoms, <laughs> we're talking The Office. Let's talk The Office. I'll laugh right through the episode. <laughs> right you can't go I'll, for the throat. <laughs> I'll laugh through episodes all day. I'm watching She-Hulk. You got Wongers? Yeah, great. I laughed for five minutes throughout how many episodes? In your defense, the credits are half the show. I don't know why they do that with all Disney+. Plus. Literally, the credits are in every language, half the show. Half the runtime is credits. Yeah, no, they really do cut off the show with credits. And it's a short episode to begin with. What do we think about the end credit scene? I have an interesting theory about the end credit scene. That Wong is putting together the Thunderbolts. I was going to ah. say that. Or is somehow involved. Somehow involved. Like, he gets them all together and then Rolk takes control. How that might go? That's the other thing. Like, where's Rolk? I thought we were doing that. I also heard Thing was going to be in this. No, no, no. <laughs> what? Thing can't be in this. We what do you mean? Yeah, we can't do legally. Fantastic Four yet. We can't yeah. legally do that. I thought we were going to see him training her in a boxing ring. You know what I'm talking about. You've seen it in the comics. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the UFL. I um, thought we were going to see something stupid like that. I don't know. The show's not bad. It did set up a lot of little things. And to Jeremiah's point, the street level stuff, because Daredevil now linked up. They're making that pretty obvious. Having sex. They've already mentioned that Spider-Man is street level too. Not having up. sex. 
You know Kingpin's out here somewhere. He can't have sex either. I guess the new Hawkeye, Kate Bishop. She's I'm not around. sure how old she's supposed to be. Let's <laughs> stop that there. Are we going to be setting up a Defenders team? That's what I'm most excited for we here. We got a Defenders team and it was terrible. We're going to we be do? setting up Heroes for Hire. Champions. Okay. Or okay. Champions. I'd rather Heroes for Hire. But yeah, Champions is fine. But was um, Defenders terrible because of how it was done and who did it? Can we give it another shot if it's Disney Plus? I think it is the one thing that Netflix drastically dropped the ball on. Iron Fist was bad. Defenders was terrible. Didn't yeah, watch either one. I think, <laughs> didn't I, watch neither. I think Defenders got such a soiling that it can't be reused. So are we going to see Daredevil move to California? We are not. I guarantee we're not. Jen's going the other way. Jen will be moving to New York. Ah. Uh, else for a minute. Now, what about West Coast Avengers? Oh, I fucking like that kind of shit. Yeah. I just threw it out there. And now everyone's all perplexed. That's right. That's another one from Pierre. Okay, oh. Pierre, 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 can you name <laughs> any of the starting members of the West Coast Avengers? The Vision. Nah, he wasn't a starting member of the West Coast Avengers. Starting. You Scarlet Witch. Nope. Wonder Man. I'll give you Wonder Man. I'll give you Wonder yes, Man. Yes, I knew it. <laughs> I knew I had one in there. Yeah, even Kyle got one with Hawkeye. <laughs> Yeah. Woo! Question. That's super know. five. Can you give us some history though, Jeremiah, on I guess West Coast Avengers as well as She Hulk's, where she lives, what she does, what she gets into, just a general, so we can make more what theories off her? of the knowledge we don't have. So West Coast Avengers. This is interesting because it slightly ties into our Cullen Bunn interview. Marvel graphic novels ended with Emperor Doom, which was their final graphic novel, currently sitting on my desk to be brought to Baltimore to get signed by Bob Hall, who was the artist on the book and also helped create the West Coast Avengers. Spins out of so that story leads to the West Coast Avengers. You have Tigra, Iron Man, Hawkeye, Wonder Man. But anywho, West Coast Avengers ran for a while. She-Hulk was not a part of the West Coast Avengers. At this time in history, does anyone want to guess where She-Hulk was? Outer what space. member of a team she was? Fantastic um, Four. No, no. I got it Points right to right. Kyle. I got it yes, right Fantastic right. Four. She replaced the Thing when the Thing gave up being a hero. And then he ended up on Mars and was stuck there for a while. So, yeah. With space, my first. Yeah. Thing. So yeah, she Hulk was part of the Fantastic Four. So do you think that maybe Pierre's random theory of West Coast Avengers has anything to do with putting her in California, or MCU listens to people being like, "Why is everything happening in New York?" Probably more the latter than the former, but the former is a good idea. We got Mister Immortal, so we got a nod to the Great Lakes Avengers, and sooner or later, there's going to be the conversation: is why there isn't multiple teams. Is the Thunderbolts going to be the answer to that? I don't know. A West Coast Avengers, I feel, is a stretch. I'd love to see it. Don't get me wrong. I just feel it's a stretch. What about Scar's hairline? <laughs> Stan Lee was the barber on Sakaar, so... Right. Oh, yeah. That's a great mention. <laughs> yeah, oh so, like, God. his that hairline being terrible, if it wasn't terrible, it wouldn't be a good continuation of that story. Do we think Scar should have been bigger? Because the seeds that planted him into an unknown source was from a bigger and not professor esque hulk it was we don't know how old he is oh. this could be eight-year-old scar interesting this could be young teenager scar we don't know his age yet the age differently hulk's age differently did you hear who i think officially now is taking over as a thunderbolt rose mm, no you didn't indiana jones himself han solo harrison ford will be our red hulk really i don't love it if i'm being honest <laughs> The actor who played him was so perfect. Dead, though. I know, but I don't know if they needed to necessarily recast him in human form. They could have recast him as a voice actor and kept him in role form. And that's expensive. Not to diminish the actor at all, but where has Marvel failed in the recasting department? I'm trying to think besides Rhodey. Even if you want to go and say that uh, Aaron whatever Johnson being replaced by Evan Peters as Quicksilver. That wasn't a recast. I mean, it wasn't a real recast, but even then. But look what they, they have Red Skull. They just well, yeah, look at exactly. the voice actor. Look at Aaron now. Now he's Craven. Yeah, that movie's going to be bad, though. Well, I'll believe it when the movie actually sees the light of day. I don't think it's seeing the light of day. It's a Warner Brothers move. That's not a Marvel move. Who watched Werewolf by Night? I didn't finish it. I watched it. It's I it fantastic. I didn't watch it. You texted me about it. 
I've been the one telling everyone in this <laughs> podcast about it for years now uh, that it's coming out. And you guys are like, yeah, Werewolf by Night, Pierre keeps mentioning it's coming out. I don't know. And it finally came out, and I haven't watched it. Only Moon Knight was going to be in it. I thought. It would have been it's... smart to have him in it, but. It makes sense. I don't know why they wouldn't, but I guess right now his path, it wouldn't make sense for the path that they put Moon Knight on right yeah, now. Yeah, true. Yeah. What made it great for me is it was a more vicious. Oh, horror. my God. Yeah, it was bloody. So it was brilliant. She killed the guy, but he wasn't quite dead. So she let him bleed out and covered his mouth while she hid. Mm -hmm. I want to see more of that. I want to see more man thing. Yeah, we know. That was good. I think, personally, you're going to see Howard the Duck and man thing, an actual thing. You know, you know, oh. He knows I'm right. I want you to be right, but I don't want you to be right. Like, I do want that more than anything, but I, I don't think it's feel. happening. No, I think it is. Howard the Duck has been teased in so many little things. I think he's going to be your spider ham of the show, a rocket raccoon. He's going to be like that on a team. I don't know how much you guys know about man thing i got two tidbits about man thing that i absolutely love he had a series at the time in the 70s when marvel was pumping out reprints to generate money so they would take multiple issues and print them into one issue and these were giant size the most famous one being giant size x-men number one giant size man thing was a series giant size man thing just no, throwing liked, that out there. I liked it when you said it. And the second thing is when Man-Thing communicates with you, he communicates with you in the language that you hear. So when he was talking to Elsa, she heard English in her head because he communicates telepathically. He was a part of the Thunderbolts for a while. A, a kind of a crappy team of the Thunderbolts, if I'm being honest, but a Thunderbolts nonetheless. And on that team was Boomerang. And Boomerang is a douchebag who talks in slang most of the time. And there was a scene where he was falling and Man-Thing catches him. And you see Man-Thing talk to him like, what's up, homie? You good? That's cool. Yeah. That's very cool. Does Man-Thing normally melt people with his hands? Those who know fear burn at the Man-Thing's touch. If you are afraid and he touches you, you will catch fire. Which is what oh. happened in those two scenes. So which is get... why Jack said, don't be afraid. Just call him by his name, Ted. So let's just say... Would you feel hot and sweaty when you touch man thing? Like personally for you, like when you tried to reach out and grab. I'm not man afraid of any man thing. Okay. I can touch any man thing just fine. I like it. So now Kevin Feige, I believe, came out and said that this is setting up something big for Marvel. Is the I man thing the big part? <laughs> the man thing might be the big part, but I think what we're actually going to have is we're going to get a annual or every two years i'm assuming we're going to get one of these special presentations and it's going to be horror based and eventually we're going to lead to the legion of monsters the only problem i see with that currently is two of the main members of the legion of monsters are famous for being universal monsters you've got the living mummy and you got frankenstein's monster they are staple characters in the marvel universe they belong there they've been there but to do a special presentation on the living mummy and frankenstein's monster would probably be a little bit difficult so they're probably going to backdoor those two but i'm assuming that we're going to get future special presentations elsa's probably going to get her own and a couple other horror themed characters tomb of dracula maybe eventually blade or if we don't get legion of monsters we're going to get midnight suns they're definitely setting up some darker fucking universe yeah which it could be yeah. like the legion of monsters or midnight suns ghost rider but at the moment, his rights are still with Fox. Who is Fox? What do they even do at this point? The last thing I know they did was Mrs. Doubtfire. What well, are we talking about now? They do terrible news. <laughs> That's true. Well, <laughs> since we're on this just rumor mill here, Borat is rumored to be Mephisto. All right. Panel is podcast. We have a full staff today, so that means this is going to be an absolute train wreck. Train Panel wreck coming. Man, whoever <laughs> edits this is going to have a real headache. <laughs> they should be paid, in my opinion. Panel of podcast. Kyle with? I think at this point, everyone knows who we are. When we have 100 downloads a day, then yes, we can. But no, you're going to introduce yourself. In the order of alphabetical. Man, look, pocket. Wait, is that a director's cut? Young Avengers 1 you're just showing off? Yeah, I forgot I bought this. Pierre, how much did you spend on that? No, no, no. Pierre, you need to bring that to me tomorrow. Like, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to ship it to Jeremiah so he can take it to Baltimore. <laughs> so bring it to me tomorrow. That. Real quick, since I did do that, I downloaded an app called Whatnot. 
and oh, whatnot. Oh, God. You're spending like 20% more. And I've been buying a lot of things off auction. And I've been winning. I win the auctions and to the point where people are like, oh, what a surprise, Pierre won again. You Hold paid on. 30% more than we were going to. Yeah. That one, I will say, I definitely stole that one. Man, look, Bucky. Bring a bubble wrap. I hear it. Just because I can't see it doesn't mean I can't hear it. All you gotta do is yeah, just hit the switch on the mic. Like just hit the switch on the mic, right on top. It glows blue. Oh, so much better. Man, look, Bucky. Transformer robots in disguise. Kyle, Same. you deserve way more. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just You're not I got. Sorry. You I drank a little bit before this I know. episode. I got no more packages. I got no more packages. Dimitri, I lied. I have more packages. He's got more. One glass. Got more. Don't open those now. That's plastic.